What's up guys, I'm Justin Swanson. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Uh, I've been trying hard here lately to get my dad to do an interview with me. He finally has caved in and has decided to talk for y'all. So I got him to sit down on the couch. I'm about to take you over there to him and let's get this interview started. How y'all doing? I'm Corey Swanstrom. They all call me Big Country. Just had to do a little interview with you guys, just let y'all know kind of where I'm at and got a lot of fans following us. So I'm just at my house relaxing right now. Hard days will work. I'm a little bulldog here with me. With that being said, now I'm gonna take five and do an interview with Justin Swanstrom. All right, so a lot of people have hit me up and they wanna know how long you have been racing for. I've been telling them I started when I was 14. I'm 23 now, so I'm going on about nine years or close to 10 years of racing. How long have you been racing? Man, I started messing with hot rods when I was about 15 years old. My dad had a, uh, he had an old Comet, he had a Corvette, he had a Nova, you know, he had some cars. Really, it's funny that people that really know me it's known my whole life, you know, I grew up rodeo, and that's what I did. I calf roped, I team roped, I bulldog. That's what all my whole family's done. Uh, me, when I got old enough, I got about 18, man, I hated rodeo, and that's, that's all I lived and breathed. That's all I got to do as a kid. But somehow I got to playing with cars and playing with hot rods. You know, my dad had a couple old cars, and I was playing with them, and I just always liked it. So, you know, really, from, from, me, from me being a guy that grew up rodeo my whole life, my family, I kind of turned to hot rods and had cars because I liked them. I liked muscle cars. And, you know, I got old enough to tell my dad I didn't want to rodeo no more. That's kind of how it went down. Um, you know, and I've just been messing with little hot rods my whole life. What's the fastest you've ever been before? What kind of cars have you been in? The fastest I've ever been is uh, 4 0. I want to say I went 408. And uh, me and Donald Long had a pro mod back in 2000. Maybe 2007, maybe 2006, I can't remember, but we had a Pro Mod and uh, I had a 784 cubic inch uh, Sunny's motor, one of them big hemi headed motors. We went, you know, back then we were kind of heavy too. I think the cars were built a lot heavier back then, but I want to say we weighed somewhere around 2,600 pounds, maybe 2,575, something like that. I don't know. Pro Mods were a lot heavier back then, or, you know, the race weight, but I think I went like 408, something like 183, 184, something like that. I, 182, I, I can't remember, but that, that's definitely the fastest I've ever been. Now you say Donald, as in like Donald Long? Yeah. yeah how do me, you? Me and Donald's been friends for a very long time. Uh, How'd y'all meet? Um, just through hot rods. I mean, I used to street race back in you know the day. I had a, an old Chevy too, and I had a 10.5 outlaw car, and I actually ran on the street and um, we street raced. And it was a pretty fast car. I mean, it wasn't like what cars are today. You know, I think the fastest I ever went with that car is four. I want to say maybe 480, something like that. Um, I think in the quarter mile, I went 790, 780, something like that over in Orlando. But, you know, I always street raced, and uh, it came a point in time where I couldn't, uh, I actually couldn't street race no more because I was a supervisor. I was probably about 23 years old, so I had a company truck and I was a foreman. And uh, Donald, he worked for himself, so Donald actually drove my car. So, we uh we street raced a lot, you know. I mean, we we track we track race, but we street race a lot too. And, and Donald actually drove my car, so that's that's how me and Donald, you know, we've been friends for I don't know 25, 30 years, something probably closer to 30 years now. Uh, in fact, Donald only lives he probably lives about three miles from me. We don't actually break bread together. He's busy, I'm busy, but you know, if he needs me, I'm here. If I need him, I know he's there. So we're 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 good friends. What's your take? Uh... In the previous video, you were talking about Stevie Jackson, Phil Schuler, all them guys, uh, the Sheik, Bahrain. What's your take on Stevie Jackson? You know, Stevie, uh, he reminds me a lot when I was young. You know, I worked very hard. I pushed hard. Um, never had quit in my vocabulary. Um, I think Stevie's a lot like that. Um, I think Stevie definitely works hard. He pushes very hard. He doesn't have quit in his vocabulary. Um, and, and that's, that's the reason why he is very successful on the racetrack. Um, I don't, you know, I give Stevie a lot of shit, but I don't have no heartburn with Stevie. Uh, I, I actually, I follow Stevie. I think Stevie's a good racer. I always wish him the best. I always hope he's out there kicking ass. You know, guys that I grew up with watching racing, some of my legends, some of my heroes, you know, Shannon Jenkins, the Iceman, you know, he drove Pro Mod. He was one of my, be my favorite racers growing up. Um, you know, uh, Bob Glidden, he drove Pro Stock. You know, he was one of my uh, my all-time favorite uh, drag racers. You know, Warren Johnson, eh, I like Warren Johnson, but he cried a little bit. But, you know, 
at the end of the day, then you had Scotty Cannon. You know, Scotty Cannon, he uh, he ran uh, Pro Mod, and Scotty Cannon, you know, he always had those crazy Oakley glasses. Uh, he had that crazy ass hairdo. And, you know, he went to he went to Top Fuel Funny Car. I wasn't really happy about that. I liked Scotty better when he drove Pro Mod, but he went over there and he made a lot of noise over there at uh, Top Fuel Funny Car too. So you know, those are the kind of guys that I grew up around. Um, you know, my son Justin, he probably doesn't even know any of those guys, but those, those guys were hardcore racers. Those guys raced hard. Um, even, hell, even Pat Musi. I'm really good friends with Pat, but Pat's another one of them hardcore racers. Uh, he's raced hard all of his life. He's a true diehard racer. And those guys, that's why those guys are always successful like they are. So y'all started out in no time with Justin, and then you went over to Radio vs. the World, and then you got into the no prep scene. A lot of people want to know, what do you think of the whole no prep scene? I like the no prep scene. I like the no prep racing. Um, I think the races run very good. It's very organized. The fans are incredible. I've never been to an NHRA race, but um, I see the amount of fans that are at NHRA. I would, I and I and I see it on TV. So I do watch it on TV. But I gotta say that uh, the no prep deal has just as many fans, if not more. The fans is really what I was blown away about. Uh, the amount of people, the amount of participation, the amount of people that's coming to the pits and seeing the cars is just, that was one of the things to me that was kind of, you know, I run the no time deal, I run the class racing deal, but I've never seen that amount of fans. Now, you know, Donald's race, he had one race that definitely ranked up there. It was a crazy, crazy fan base. Um, but, you know, I've only been to two of the no prep races, but both no prep races are, I mean, I've seen fans parking three or four miles away and walking to the track. I mean, it was total commitment. So. You know, and then the whole thing, it was it was challenging to get that car to go down that racetrack. You know, we're running on big tires. We're used to running on small tires. But, you know, to tune that car to go down that racetrack and see Justin drive down through there, um, it's very challenging. Um, it's not, it's definitely not as easy as some people would think it is. Um, but there's, you know, any racing, man, is not easy. Listen, it takes a lot of talent, a lot of skill to go out there and run them cars. Me, I'm just a dumb old redneck, digs ditches for a living. You know, I roll the dice and throw it at it and see what sticks. So sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. But those other guys that are out there, you know, those guys are very talented and good at what they do. At the beginning of the year, y'all teamed up with Mike Starvinos. How's he doing for y'all throughout this year? He's doing pretty good, man. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's still got my, you know, I've known about Mark for a long time. I've seen him race for a long time. Um, you know, Justin had come to me a year ago about Mike wanting to team up with us. And, you know, I was really, uh, I kind of told, I was against it, to be honest with you, just because I just didn't know how it was going to work out. Um, so, but then he came to me again this year, and, um, you know, I've kind of been leaning on him. I wanted him to kind of do his own thing. I wanted him to kind of support his own habit uh, more than what I was trying to help him out with, kind of like I did, you know. So, you know, yes, we got the car, we got all the equipment there, but it was, it was him that I wanted him to pay for the cost to go race that car, the fuel, the maintenance on the motor. You know, he's got the whole operation there in front of him, but I wanted him. And he and he needed Mike to team up with him to do that. So they teamed up so they could buy all the parts for the motor. Um, that's basically off my back. Um, you know, paying for the fuel for the rig, paying for the nitrous, all that stuff, man. It's just, it's a big cost. And uh, I felt like I just wanted those guys to earn it. I wanted those guys to pay for that themselves. And I wanted those guys to know that they got to get out there. They got to win money and they got to race and uh you know to, to, to win some of that money and help pay for that cost mike as a driver he's getting better and better I, I would say he's always been a good driver but the whole thing with the radial tire car you know me i'm not as good a tuner as a lot of those tuners out there you know sometimes i get those cars upset uh justin's really really good i tuned for him for i don't know since he is 14 years so he's i've tuned for him for like nine years now so I've done just about everything to him. I've spun him around the middle of the racetrack. I've had him hit the wall. I mean, listen, I'm not no professional tuner. I dig ditches for a living. I do the best I can. Those tracks can throw you for a loop. Sometimes they get the best of me. But, you know, Justin's really, really good at driving that car. Um, he's good on equipment. He doesn't really tear anything up. Um, Mikey, eh, he's still getting there, you know. Mike, Mike uh, my Willie Mikey comes down and tears some shit up. But uh, he's getting better, without a doubt. No doubt about it. We got Mike in the car because the RVW weights have gotten so light. Bottom line is we just getting a, getting that weight. And we're not there yet, but we're as light as we can be with Mike in the car. So that's really why Mike drives the RVW schedule with the car. If we run Pro Mod, Justin's going to run it. 
you know, Justin will run a pro mod because of the weight. At the end of the day, driving those cars, it's all about driving from the seat of your ass. Uh, Mike's learning to get better and better. He's getting feel with that car. Justin, he has really good feel for just about any car he gets in. Um, you know, we're running a no prep with Justin. We got to weight, we got to weigh 2,600 pounds. Uh, Justin can obviously, he's a big guy, he's six foot two, you know, 280 pounds, big man. He's not, you know, Mike's flypaper, he's 150 pounds. So, Justin, you know, he runs the no prep deal. We can get to weight. We've got a new car with Justin so that he can run weight. We're going to try to be more competitive in the no prep deal. We're not going to run a couple races. I think we ran very well, but we definitely want to run better. Justin has already revealed the Radio vs. the World car and the no prep car. Y'all do have a limited 28 car coming out, which is a 69 Camaro, Mike Starvino's own. What do you think y'all will do with that combination in that class? I, I don't honestly know. You know, I haven't messed with no small motors like that in a long time. Mike's got a little peanut he's coming out there with. Um, you know, that's a little 632, but uh, you know, man, I don't know. I had a 632 in uh, Justin's car. We had a car called Bodacious. I had a 632, and that thing was pretty fast right out of the gate, man. That 632 ran strong. And that car was way heavier than what we're going to be running weight at. So I, I'm pretty optimistic, man. I, you know, I talked to Mike about it. I, I told him what I thought it could run. Um, I don't know what the guys on the 28 Limited are running. You know, I know some of them boosted guys. They're pretty fast, you know, but it is what it is. I, I just, all I I can do is take a look at class racing. Um, you know, I look at the X275 guys and what they can run at, what weight they run at, with what size turbo. I can only imagine that the right no time guy shows up with not all that weight on them, with a bigger turbo, way bigger than they run next to 75, I can only imagine how fast they can go. Now, whether they're going that fast or not, it's two different things. Um, I plan on working hard with Mike's car. He's got that little Camaro coming out. You know, I plan on digging deep. I'm gonna use what I've learned from these big motors, from these uh, fast cars, and I'm gonna just try and apply it over to that car with just minus the horsepower. I do think that car's gonna be fast once we get it worked out. And uh, I believe we're going to make some noise. If that's what Mike chooses that he wants to run over there with a 28 Limited, I believe we'll be a threat for sure. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm glad we got this little interview going. If y'all haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You can click the button down below, turn the notifications on. So every time we post a video, y'all go ahead and get the first C of it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Swanstrom00, Snapchat at jswan9699, or on Facebook at Justice Swanstrom. Uh, I don't have no cars here at the house right now. We've already sold them, bought new stuff. I'm going to pick up a car from wiring this weekend. The Radio vs. the World car will be debuted in two weeks. I got to go down south and get with Mike. We're going to shoot a video, so I'll get that for y'all too. And then the 69 Camaro will be out about a month, month and a half. So right now, I know I've been slow about getting videos out. I just don't have nothing here at the house to shoot. But once I get the cars home, I'll get a lot more videos for y'all.